How's it going everyone? Joe Garth here, creator of Brushify.io. I hope you guys enjoyed that little showcase of the Brushify Morelands pack. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some of the features of the Morelands pack and how you can use it to quickly build Morelands style levels in Unreal Engine 4. If you guys like these kind of videos, make sure you like and subscribe by hitting the subscribe button below and clicking the little bell notification icon. You can also go to www.brushify.io forward slash bootcamp and sign up for the mailing list. So let's have a look at some of the features of the pack. So let's jump right in. This is the scene that you get with the Morelands pack as a sort of example scene. Uh, and as you can see, it's running pretty well. It's got about 120 frames per second on my machine. I think you'll find that it's a very, very well optimized um, scene in general. Uh, if I switch to the shader complexity view, uh, you can see that there's barely any overdraw. Uh, and the overdraw that there is, is being caused by the uh, vegetation and foliage. But this really just means you can basically go nuts with the uh, the foliage painting. You know, even though you've got areas where the foliage is getting you know pretty dense, uh, it means you can just go crazy with the heather. And uh, that's really important because if you're gonna be running around and have lots and lots of this kind of dense foliage uh, that are being used to kind of cover up rocks and things like that, uh, you're gonna want it to be extremely cheap. And so that's something I really tried to get uh, to cover with this, um, with this example map and with the assets. So first things first, uh, you've got a few bookmarks that you can go to if you just hit the number keys. Uh, so that's bookmark one, two, three. And uh, you know, th these are really just cool angles on the little scene here that I've just dressed up. And um, yeah, you can just really see like how this small scene, uh, how you could basically dress up a small area of your level uh, using these assets and you know, get it to hold up really well. And you know, of course this is, you know, uh, your mileage may vary. If you have a smaller environment, you maybe want to be even more detailed. If you have like a massive MMO or something like that, maybe this is already just enough for you. Or maybe you even want to, you know, be a bit more sparing with the foliage and stuff, and you don't necessarily need all of the little, uh, you know, rocks and uh, bushes and stuff like that. So yeah, it's really up to you whether you want to dial it uh, up or down. I'm going to show you in this video some of the ways that you can create your own little areas and sort of expand upon uh, the work that I've already done here that you get with the pack. So the first thing I'm going to do is sort of break down the pack and how this scene is actually put together. So very first things first, I'm going to start with the background. The background is made up of uh, distance meshes. So if you see here, if I select this big mountain in the distance, you can see this is actually one massive static mesh. And the advantage with this is that it's extremely performant. So if we zoom all the way over here, uh, you can see that this is actually just this huge mesh uh, that's you know very, very far in the distance. And uh, if we switch to the wireframe, you can see it's actually not got so many polygons. So yeah, all of these mountains are very, very cheap and they can be sort of rotated and scaled and sort of translated around uh, you know, to form different um, background vistas. Uh, so yeah, these are super, super useful. Uh, the uh, Brushify actually comes with, and I'm going to show you this very quickly. If I just save out of this map and go to open level. Uh, instead of the Brushify uh, Moorlands level, uh, if you go into Maps Moorland, you'll be able to find the Moorlands level, and that's the one that we've got open right now. But there'll also be another level called Assets Moorland. Now if you just double click on that to load it, take a second. And yeah, so there you can see that this has actually got uh, sort of examples of all of the different terrain brushes that you get with Brushify. And uh, yeah, you can sort of see, uh, you know, what different uses you'd have for these different types of terrain uh, brushes uh, to use in the distance. So yeah, there are four in total that come with this pack. Those can be also used in multiple ways. So they're not just distance meshes. I also provide an alpha brush. So this is my pack that's kind of, this is my project that's got sort of all of the Brushify packs integrated into one. Um, but as you can see, there's this T underscore Brushify underscore Moreland A, alpha brush. And that's what you'll get with the Moreland pack. Of course, if you get other packs such as, you know, the Grasslands pack or the Mountains pack, the Tropical pack, they all come with their own individual alpha brushes uh, that you can use as well. Uh, so how do I use the alpha brush? So we've established that the background is created or comprised of these different distance meshes. 
just going to go back to the Moreland's level and it loads very very quickly because it's quite a small example but how do we use these uh, alpha sculpting brushes so first things first I'm going to go to the modes panel and I'm going to go to landscape and from there you can see that I'm I'm, I've already got a sculpting brush on the landscape that I can I can use, but it's just this kind of spherical blob. If I make the little radius there a little smaller, and I start painting around with this, make sure you set it to the right landscape, because there are in fact two landscapes in the example scene. Uh, so there's landscape and landscape two. Landscape two is the one that you can actually walk around on. Landscape without is just for the distance. And yeah, you can just start to sculpt. But as you can see, I'm sort of sculpting, but you know, it's a little bit tricky because all I'm getting is basically blobs, you know, and uh, it's just it's just not that um, in incredibly useful to be able to sculpt a blob. So what's more ideal than these sort of blobs, especially on a larger scale, would be if we could actually add real details to the terrain. So to do that, I'm gonna use the alpha sculpting brush uh, that I mentioned earlier. I'm just going to go to a blank area and I'm going to change the so I'm going to make sure that sculpt is selected and I'm going to change to alpha and there I'm going to go to the uh, content browser and then brushify so content brushify alpha brushes and I'm going to make sure that I choose the brushify moreland alpha brush and just drag and drop that onto the texture slot here and once that's done you'll be able to see that there are four different texture channels here. There's red, green, blue, and alpha. And by switching between those different check texture channels, you can actually switch between the four different uh, landscape brushes, uh, the exact same landscape brushes that we saw before and that are used in the distance here. So the same exact height maps, except what's, what's happened is they're actually baked into an alpha brush that you can actually use uh, to sculpt the terrain. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to change the brush size to something really large, like 64,000, uh, maybe a little lower. Not quite a big enough map for that. And then I'm going to make sure I click Use Clay Brush. I'm going to set the tool strength pretty high to five, and I'm just going to I'm just going to choose a cool looking alpha brush. I think the red channel, the first one, is really cool looking. And it's a great example of this. So if I just click down now on the terrain you can see that it's automatically created this really complex looking mountain structure uh, with you know valleys and erosions and all of this kind of stuff and pretty much all I had to do was just click one time. I can now just jump in and I can actually play uh, the level now uh, with that modified height map and yeah it basically took no time at all. Of course, now you can go in and, you know, sculpt finer details and really get the most out of the terrain that way. Uh, or, you know, if you don't like that at all, just Control Z and maybe you want to change the orientation or the size of the brush uh, to make it a little bit smaller. So let's make a little mountain there. And really what this does is it just gives you tons and tons of detail and a huge amount of terrain without having to do very much hands-on work at all. So let's try a different brush now. Let's try the green channel. So this one's a bit more of a kind of grooves or erosion lines in the terrain. I also think that looks really cool. And then, yeah, again, I can just go right to the top of this mountain and just start running around on it, walking on it. Uh, of course, this is the Brushify Landscape Auto material that's allowing you to do this. So if we come over here, and look at the landscape material that's applied to this landscape. It's the mi underscore material, uh, mi underscore landscape material. I'm just going to find that in the browser. And there's an, a material override here, uh, so it's placed in the maps Moreland material overrides folder, and that's just a copied version of the instance, the same instance that's in Brushify materials landscape, mi underscore landscape. Uh, so this material instance, of course, is you know. It contains all of the sort of important settings for the auto material, the Brushify auto material. And that lets you, you know, tweak all of the stuff like you know, the tiling, the, the direction of the snow, um, the flow maps if you need those, uh, PBR settings. Uh, it lets you turn on and off, you know, things like the grass, the pebbles, the rocks, all of that kind of stuff. 
So let's just try that now. If I go into our material landscape instance, let's try and make a few little modifications to the landscape to make it look a little bit better. Uh, so you can see this cliff wall here looks a bit low res. So I'm going to just alter the tiling and change that to 12. And now you can see that that's increased the tiling resolution there uh, for this landscape. It looks a bit better. Uh, so say also that you didn't want perhaps uh, the grass on the uh, ground. Well, you can just tick enable grass and untick that. And just give it a second to sort of recompile some of the shaders. And as you can see, the grass will now have completely disappeared from the terrain. So that's in case you just don't want the grass at all, or you know maybe you're doing something where you just, just want to hide it. Um, you can also hide these little rocks that are going on the edges here by just unticking Enable Rocks. And same thing, it's just going to crunch through and recompile a few shaders. But in the end, the rocks will no longer be there. So yeah, these of course give you a nice bit of control over the auto material. Uh, you guys should check out Brushify Bootcamp if you want to have a little bit more detail about this. I'll have videos about that coming out very soon, uh, about all of the grass type system and how the procedural setup works for that. But out of the box, if you want to get really good results, the best thing to do is to simply uh, disable. Uh, is to simply return everything to its sort of default settings. And there you'll get a pretty decent looking uh, result. So yeah, now we have the sort of basic concept of the landscape sculpting down. Uh, I'm going to add a new area here, which is just a little bit more of a sort of valley extension uh, in uh, this direction, I think. So first thing I'm going to do is kind of twirl this brush around. And then I'm just going to make a little... Oh, I've got on the wrong terrain. Yeah, make sure you choose the correct terrain. So in this case, landscape 2. So once you've got the sort of idea of, so yeah, once you've got the sort of idea of the sort of landscape sculpting, uh, we can start to make some modifications to the level here. Uh, so first thing first, I'm gonna sort of zoom out and I'm gonna twirl my landscape alpha brush around and then uh, let's make some little detailed valley here. Yeah, that's cool. And I'm gonna switch it to the other alpha brush Kind of twirl it around a bit to get some interesting shapes and then put another valley extension there. So now you can see I've already got these kind of cool looking extensions to my landscape. Uh, whole new areas that I just didn't have before uh, that are now, of course, completely explorable. I can walk around and, you know, make some changes to the terrain and then I can jump into the game and then walk around and, you know, check how things look. So yeah, the combination of the sort of distance meshes that are very, very cheap in the background, um, you know, it keeps things really high res because they're just textured uh, textured meshes. And then the actual auto material for sort of you know, the player to walk around on. Uh, this is a really powerful combination if you want to keep things very, very cheap um, for a game. And of course, you can then, of course, go in and actually paint onto the landscape. So I'm just going to apply a snow... Uh, layer info. So yeah, I mean, if we would want to maybe paint some little snow caps on top of here, we can do. Uh, not sure how realistic that would be. Um, or you know, if you really want to kind of blend or break up the um, tiling, uh, you can also do that. So you could put down, for instance, the forest layer. So yeah, this this can be really useful for you know creating transitions around mountains that you know maybe you don't want to have. Um, too many seams or you know, maybe you've got too much repeating patterns so like here for instance there's a really nasty repeating pattern of course that can be solved by you know a bit of painting or a bit of you know terrain manipulation um, you know like painting uh, basically sculpting the terrain a little bit more um, to get a little bit more detail out of the terrain if you have big flat areas it can be very tricky to you know hide the tiling uh, without using, you know, a more expensive shader. Uh, but you, as you can see with the um, with the brushes, you can actually get pretty far. Yeah. <clears throat> and you know, from a normal player view, you're going to be seeing something like this rather than sort of bird's eye anyway. So, 
yeah, that's really how you'd go about um, changing up uh, the landscape that the player is walking around on. Uh, there's one more layer I've got to show you, which is the grass dry layer, uh, which is just a slight variation. It's a bit more of a yellowish grass layer. Um, comes with slightly different grass growing on there. But yeah, you can really see, you know, how far you can get artistically with, you know, different colors, different paint layers. Uh, they're all blended together. And uh, yeah, you can be very, very creative with it. And if we check the overdraw, uh, you can see the way that it works is the more paint areas per area that you have, uh, the more expensive that area is going to be. So, you know, if this area, for instance, has, I think it has a few too many paint layers, uh, we can just go in there and, you know, identify the one that is the culprit. So, you know, here I can just paint out a bit more grass and sort of get rid of the uh, forest there to make that layer go. <laughs> wow, it's almost gone completely um, green again. Uh, that's just because there's less paint layers within that sector, you know, within that square. So that's how you sort of go about optimizing the landscapes, you know, even though you're using a lot of different paint layers, just keep an eye on how many you're using sort of per square, per sector, and, uh, and you'll be okay. So yeah, that's how you do the sort of playable terrain modifications. And, you know, of course, for the distance, You've got the you know the toolkit of all of the different distance meshes that you can just work with and sort of play around with uh, to form sort of vistas and things like that, and uh, yeah you can get reasonably close to these so um, don't worry too much about that. So yeah, next thing on the list is the uh, photogrammetry rocks. So yeah, I've got a few of these sort of big photogrammetry rock pieces that you know you, we'll just kind of walk around them and show you guys. Um, they're really cool because they're actually scanned uh, from real rocks, of course, and um, yeah, they come with lots of little details and stuff like that uh, that, you know, really help to make it look a bit more realistic. Uh, and if I grab one of these, you can see that they're actually quite usefully shaped because you can just kind of slot those into the terrain and, uh, you know, move them around, maybe scale them. Uh, and then, you know, once they're kind of slotted in like that, I think the really cool thing about them is that uh, they can um, be then covered in, you know, sort of different foliage uh, to make them blend in even better. So right now you see there's kind of a hard line between the terrain and the rock. So usually what I would do is just go in here and uh, let's maybe paint in a few of the uh, ferns. Okay, that's cool. And then maybe some of the green heather. And you'll notice that this actually grows on the rock if you want it to as well. Uh, you can actually dis disable that there, static meshes, and then it will just grow on the landscape. And uh, yeah, let's just paint some of this around a little bit. You can see how fast it is, and it's quite cheap just to sort of scatter around foliage like that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to also paint down some of the brown. Okay, some of the brown heather, and then last but not least, some of the purple, um, yeah, here it is, purple heather. And yeah, so now you've got sort of a nice variation that helps to sort of cover up the edges of the rock and really blend it in. Uh, let's make a little baby rock right next to it because I think that will look a bit better. Um, yeah, something like this. And then let's tweak that a little bit and put a um, another little slab down. Yeah, something like this right here. Something for the player to walk along or walk next to. Just gives it a little bit more um, realism. So. There. So yeah, very rapid. Uh, you can come up with cool shapes, um, you know, and, and cool ways to sort of blend these things in um, with the ferns. 
And I really think this is one of those cases where it's just a case, you know, it's just a case of having the assets. Uh, and then, you know, you can start to play around with it. Yeah, not much to it. It's just a very simple way to sort of dress up areas. And of course, you know, if these photogrammetry assets aren't enough for you, uh, I encourage you to check out uh, Quixel Megascans. Uh, they've actually started to, since they've been bought by Epic, uh, they've actually started to add the Megascans packs up on the Unreal Engine marketplace. So, you know, if you want to get even more sort of additional photogrammetry, uh, yeah, go go head over to the Unreal Marketplace and, and get that the Quixel stuff for free. Um, they're also perfect to use in, you know, levels like this. Um, and, you know, that's a, that's a really great thing that Epic Games have done, you know, handing those out for free to everybody. So yeah, grab those as soon as you can. Optimization, uh, if I go to levels and then mesh LODs, uh, you can see that all of the LODs here are working. And you know, I can zoom in, zoom out, and you can sort of see uh, the LOD transitions happening. So all of the different, you know, grass, the, the rocks, everything has LODs. And uh, you know, you can basically see that everything is pretty well optimized in that way. So don't really worry too much about scattering a lot of rocks or uh, scattering uh, foliage. Uh, I also have, of course, support for uh, pr um, procedural volumes. So if we go to the procedural foliage volume, there's actually one already locked down. Uh, and we choose rocks moorland. Uh, I'm just going to copy paste this one to show you guys in a little bit more detail. So let's just make this one a little bit bigger. Just going to change the size of the square here, uh, the uh, box that it's in. And if I hit uh, generate, just make that a little bit smaller, uh, you can see that this actually, let's delete all the foliage that's already there. And then let's hit generate on this guy again, re-simulate. And you can see that this is just adding sort of pre you know pre-placed rocks uh you know all along different areas of the terrain so you know you don't have to do if you're doing massive massive generation of environments you can just hit re-simulate and then it will place just a few little rocks and of course you can go in there and start like uh changing those up around a little bit uh by going to the foliage and then select tool and then you can just you know change the positions of them so maybe you can find a little bit of a better positioning if you want very rapidly but the great thing is they're already pre-placed for you uh, so now we've got a little corridor that you can kind of run down and it just you know of course does some of the work for you so you're not having to sort of build these massive areas all on your own um, and there are also uh, foliage volumes for um, let's just make another one of these There are also foliage volumes for the heather. So if you just drag heather moorland onto there, this is in the asset browser. It's in the, all of these procedural spawners you'll find in the in the Brushify procedural folder. And inside of moorland, heather, you'll find the heather moorland. Or if you want the rocks, they'll be in rocks, rocks moorland. And yeah, just drag and drop those procedural spawners on. And then uh, let's hit re-simulate. And you can see it sort of added this sort of generic sort of clumps of heather. Of course, the results aren't gonna be quite as amazing as if you had actually gone through and hand painted them all. Um, but, you know, certainly it's a it's a, some extra detail that you wouldn't have unless you did that. Of course, you know, you can just go in and uh, grab all of the um, foliage and just, you know, start painting it down a little bit crazy. Let's go very, very rapidly. And make some very, very quick foliage. So that's just like, you know, going nuts with the foliage very quickly and just you know, seeing how far you can get in like five minutes. Of course, it'd be cool if you had the time to spend on an MMO or something decorating every single minute area uh, with lots and lots of detail. But the reality is that most of these sort of MMO games, um, it's not really possible to do that if you have, you know, hundreds of square kilometers. That's why my advice to people is usually just to try and keep their maps small. 
and then uh, you know focus more on the assets focus more on the attention to detail um, and you know make it easy for yourself make it make it so you've got these rapid tools um, that you can you know you can use to um, very very quickly and rapidly uh, put together environments uh, and that's I think a better tactic than um, you know going for something crazy like oh let's make hundreds and hundreds of square kilometers especially when it's you know uh, your first game or an indie game or something like that let's be honest realistically uh, smaller maps uh, are gonna be a lot easier to manage rather than you know trying to develop a massive massive world on your first uh, attempt at building a game so yeah it also comes with some other rock meshes too uh, so if you go inside your cliffs meshes folder it's brushify meshes cliffs meshes and check inside of there you'll also see that you have uh, the cliff large which is just a really useful uh, cliff piece for decorating so the top of mountains and stuff like that so you get that with the pack you also get the super super useful sort of um, slab shaped cliff which you know you can use to sort of slot into terrain in places uh, let's see if we move that over here to this area we were just working on how can we use this um, yeah so usually what I use this for is sort of as a kind of slab um, you can make it a little bigger you can of course rotate these assets and move them around a little bit uh, to really get you know good results that way but yeah this one's really great for kind of slotting into the parts where you think that it's maybe going a bit too flat or a bit too sort of um, yeah if, if the terrain is showing too much um, then you can just kind of use these uh, as nice little ways to break up the terrain and, and sort of add a little bit more complicated detail um, to the surfaces and of course all of these have collisions and stuff so you don't have to worry about the player like you know colliding or messing up with them and again they have lots so don't worry about that and these make these really nice little overhangs uh, and I really like the way they sort of catch the light uh, so yeah let's walk through this scene again now we've moved a little bit further on with our dressing and yeah we can kind of run up here and oh look at this it's a cool place to kind of ambush somebody they're walking through this valley and then you kind of hide behind this rock wait for them to come through and kill them with a bow and arrow or a gun or something hit them over the head with a rock depends what your game is um so yeah so that's just um yeah just me messing around a little bit with the level design and moving things around um yeah you also get a few little scatter rocks as well um some little slabs like this those are used for the sort of procedural bits of the terrain um, but these are just small rocks yeah just little rocks that you can use to kind of uh you know add in in places if you if you ever need something that just breaks up some detail or or you need some little little rocks like that these are cool because they they're good for little slabs good for good good sort of little slabs for you to kind of slot in here here and there and uh, create some extra detail so yeah it's really down to you know how you use the assets to you know to dress up scenes and um, you know working at your own pace you know finding things and reusing things in different ways of course the less assets that you actually use uh, the more performant your game is going to be um, this myth of you know having a unique asset for absolutely everything is an incredibly bad way to work for environments it's actually much better to have less assets it's less texture memory um, it's less draw calls um, so few asset fewer assets are, are sometimes a better approach um, and you know less memory on the disk as uh, of course as well so yeah and all of these I've, I've you know gone through and I've you know carefully considered um, you know the textures that are being used so they're all make sure you know make sure that they they, they do have different submaterials but there are no sort of wasted submaterials um, there are no sort of you know bad optimizations here or there so I've kind of gone through these assets and, and made sure that uh, all of those kind of mistakes that you'd need to be fixing uh, for them to work properly in games uh, are generally fixed and if you ever do notice anything in my assets that you know you think is a miss or you think could be better uh, please just send me an email and uh, I'll do my best to uh, to look into fixing that so 
Yeah, and uh, well, what else is there? So there's also this, if you notice, this cl scrolling um, cloud texture. If I kind of go into the uh, light source of the scene, I scroll right down to the bottom and I go to the MI clouds material instance. Uh, here it's set to uh, 0, 0.0, but if we set it to 0 0.02, uh, you can see that that's started the clouds. Let's exaggerate it, but there we go. That's <laughs> that's the clouds moving very very rapidly over the landscape. But usually that's set to like 0.1, uh, sorry 0 0.02 or something like that. So you can barely even see them moving. But you kind of feel like it's there's something cool going on with the lighting um, that really makes a sort of dramatic difference. And you know, of course, you've got control over like how intense that is, how much light shows through. Um, but yeah, it's just a very nice little, uh, very, very simple sort of oscillating uh, cloud texture that's a light function that's plugged into the light source. Um, so you get that as well. Uh, you also get the uh, simple water shader. So if we go to Brushify, Materials folder, and then go to Water, Ocean, and just drag the water mesh into the scene and enlarge it, very, very large. Uh, and at first it's got this kind of, uh, yeah, it's got more like an ocean shader, so it's got a very, very soft diffuse. But if you just come right up to the uh, material instance, and uh, yeah, let's just uh, create a material instance, uh, a fresh one. So I'm just going to copy and paste the material instance into a different folder and uh, apply that. And then, uh, yeah, we can now tweak that material instance a little bit. So I'm just going to change the fade density. Um, and yeah, now you can see that we've got a pretty cool little water shader that we can move up and down here. And yeah, we can, <laughs> we've already made a little lake. Um, I'm going to change the water color, to something a little less blue. I think it's more of a, maybe a brown river or something like that. Brownish green. That might be a bit more interesting or a bit more realistic um, for our landscape. And yeah, now we've got a nice little river uh, sort of flowing through this area. So yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything. Uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed this uh, sort of rundown of all the different features of this pack. Uh, and I hope that I've sort of shown you how easy things can be, you know, once you have the assets and the infrastructure sort of already set up um, for building levels. And um, yeah, if you have any problems or questions or you know any uh, any ways that you think the Brushify could be better, uh, just get in touch with me. Uh, you can do it through the Unreal Engine Marketplace, or you can use the contact box at www.brushify.io. Uh, you can also get more videos that are like this, sort of tutorial videos, um, at uh, www.brushify.io forward slash bootcamp. So if you go onto brushify.io and go to bootcamp, uh, this is how the page looks right now, but uh, I'm in the middle of sort of overhauling it at the moment uh, to make uh, everything look a bit better. And, you know, I'm gradually adding more and more episodes. Uh, but on here, you've of course got a whole playlist of the different videos. Um, and I'm gradually adding more for sort of each subject. So I've got one about tessellation coming up soon. And, you know, after that, I'll have, you know, procedural and the grass types and, you know, all of these different features that people have been requesting um, that I kind of give a, an overview of. But yeah, I hope you guys found this overview video uh, useful and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.